So I got an email the other day for Mailbag Monday. I thought it was a really good email, so I think we'll make our own video. It's about received performance of coaxial cable. He writes, Dear Mr. Lord Pota, as it were. That's a new one, Mr. Lord Pota, I like that. You've covered the efficiency of the M&P coax once or twice on your channel. It seems to be quite the good coax and I plan to order some in the near future. My question is, do you notice an improvement on its received signal quality along with its superior transmission care, uh, qualities? The reason I ask is I use ham sticks with a mag mount during POTA activations quite effectively, but often I will receive better signal reports than I can give back. I understand. I was considering changing out the RG58 coax to the Hyperflex 5 in hopes I would have better received signals. It could be my portable setup is just that much more badass than what everyone else is using, <laughs> doubt it, or it's the tinnitus hearing loss. So there's a lot of variables that go into this, a whole lot. And one that I'm sure uh, there's gonna be a lot of comments on how many different ways I screw this up. But you know what, I'm out here doing this. So uh, I've, been, I've been thinking about this for a little while and I'm thinking, uh, one, it could just be the receive stations uh, you know, have much better antennas than your hamstick. Your hamstick is going to receive a lot less than a lot of other antennas out there. So that's number one. But I brought out a hamstick and I brought out five different coaxial cables. I brought out RG58U, I brought out RG8X, I brought out Hyperflex 5, I brought out Ultraflex 7 Sahara, and I brought out Hyperflex 10 Sahara. All approximately 100 foot lengths. Uh, plus or minus, I think the shortest runs about 91 feet and the longest runs about 106 feet. So there's some variable there. I want to do just some receive on Whisper. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically export the data from Whisper for each coax. And I think I'm just going to average out the signal uh, reports in, in dBs and kind of look at it that way. And also how many stations I'm actually receiving with each one. And we'll kind of look at those two uh metrics and and see if we can get some kind of quantifiable data there again there's so many variables and this is just one experiment so definitely take this experiment with a grain of salt let me say that again definitely take this experiment with a grain of salt but hopefully we can at least see something and see is there a difference uh between rg58u and and hyperflex 10 sahara i would hope there is so uh i'm gonna hook up the uh i've got a 20 meter ham stick i'm gonna put it on the uh, Wolf River Coils tripod with three 33 foot radials and that will be the constant throughout this test and the variable will be the coaxial cable. So let's have at it. I'm going to sit here for probably an hour or so just gathering data and I will come back and report my findings just like that. Who's ready to analyze some data? I know I am. Now before the keyboard commandos start getting online and typing in telling me how wrong I am and what I should have done and what I should have done different or what they should have done. Why don't you go out and do it before you start criticizing me? Because I know I know it's coming. <laughs> anyway, so this test was done between 3.10 p.m. and 4.36 p.m. Central Standard Time. And what I did is just sat there for five Whisper transmissions in a row on each coaxial cable. I went to whisper.org highlighted the times uh, for the receive, put it all into a spreadsheet, and uh, did a little bit of averaging and calculating. We'll look at that in a second. So let's hop over to the desktop and look at some data. So here's the data for the RG58U. And if we go down here at the bottom, let me explain a little bit. This number here, this number here, they don't mean anything. They're just what I use to calculate. So this average SNR, I took all, we had 40 uh, received stations. I took all of these signal to noise ratios, which equals 798, and I divided that by 40, and I did it across all of these for their respective numbers, okay? So with the RG58U, we had an average receive uh, decibel level of minus 19.95. And just for fun, I put in some distance. We had an average distance uh, of 1,420 miles away that we were receiving from, okay? So that's RG58U. That's kind of the, the benchmark of where we're going at, okay? So now let's look at RG8X. Again, same thing here. This time we had 44 uh, stations. We can see this number. Uh, we're looking at minus 18.65. It's important to know these are negative numbers. The closer to zero we get, the better the signal. So lower number, better signal. So 18 
is better than 19. Okay, you with me? And an average of the RG8X of about 1,370 miles. This, you got to take all of this with a little bit of grain of salt. But we do see a pattern start going. So if we look at the Hyperflex 5, which is the coax we're interested in, uh, now we can see we are minus 18.02 dB and an average of 1,521 miles that we received. And we heard 52 stations. So we've gone just from stations from 40 to 43 to 52. You with me so far? Now, I went ahead and added a couple more of Messi and Poloni's cables because I, I like to take the Ultraflex 7 out. Uh, it's not much bigger than the Hyperflex 5, but I just like its performance a little bit better. And we can see now we went to 77 stations that we, re that we heard. Uh, with a minus 17.05 dB and an average of 1,574 miles uh, of the distance uh, that we heard. Then just for giggles, this isn't something I would typically take portable other than for like field day or kind of more special events like support your park weekend and, and stuff like that. But uh, Hyperflex 10 Sahara I brought along with me and we heard 73 stations and a total average distance of about 1,473, and our DB of only minus 15.18. Uh, so when we look at all of those together, I've totaled everything up, and we can see here's our average signal-to-noise ratio compared to the coaxial cables. Here's the average distance heard, total stations heard, and then uh, the, the meat and potatoes here, this column is really what matters. How much more better is the Hyperflex 5 going to be to the RG58 and the answer is in my scientific one test uh, test was minus 1.93 dBs better so almost like the station would double their power is is how you would hear that almost uh, so 3 dBs is is a half an S unit so we're not even looking at two so if you were like in if, if you were receiving a station 5x5 five five with RG58U, you would almost hear them 5x5.5 five five and a half by jumping up to the Hyperflex 5. So not a huge difference. I mean, will it matter? Eh. Could it be the difference between not hearing a station at all and just barely being able to pull it out? Probably. That's kind of the margins we're working with here. But look at what happens with Ultraflex 7 now. Only two millimeters bigger. This is, uh, we're, we're, we're in, with both of these cables, we're in the RG8X-ish uh, size in terms of just physical width of the cable, okay? So we're 2.9, call it 3 dB better than the RG58. Now we've just doubled our power, or the station has doubled their power. Again, you're still, if you're receiving a 5x5, five five, you'd be receiving like a 5x5.5. Five five these are not big numbers we're talking about. And even when we jump up to the Hyperflex 10, we're a 4.77 dB. So, you know, three quarters of an S unit, let's call that. So they'd be five by five and three quarters. So almost a full S unit. But, um, you know, those th that could be the difference between uh, hearing a signal and not. I think probably the more important thing would be to get a better antenna and... Uh, I'd be curious to see what kind of results we got if I did this same test with, say, an NFED half wave, you know, uh, an actual, like, good, uncompromised antenna, so to speak. So, anyway, those are the results. Uh, hope that helps. I had fun doing this test. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you have any constructive criticism. Uh, I might be getting a signal to noise generator thing at some point to do some tests. So we can be a little more scientific. That would really be the, the way to do this. But uh, yeah, let me know if, you know, what else could we do to test the receive capability uh, over coax because it's 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 a very difficult thing to do it's very subjective there's time there's you know i could hook up five different antennas to five different radios but then you have five variables there so it's you know it, it's it's an interesting rabbit hole to go down so anyway don't forget to like share and subscribe follow me on twitter at k and we'll see you again on another episode of k radio stuff 73 guys